I'm Jancy Despain with Bright Idea Tutoring. This is the fourth video in a six-part series on aldol reactions. In this video, I'm going to show you how to recognize crossed aldol reactions, sometimes called mixed aldol reactions, and show you how to predict products for them in a really simple way. Before you watch this video, I want to make sure that you've seen the second and third videos in this series, because there's concepts that you're going to learn in those videos that are going to make this video a lot easier and make a lot more sense. So if you need to go back and watch those, just click these links and go back, and then they'll lead you right back here. Otherwise, let's get started. This is an example of a crossed or mixed aldol reaction. And we know that it's crossed because there are two different reactants rather than just one. These two reactants are going to combine with each other to produce one product. So this might look really different than what you're used to, but it's actually just the same. Your first step is to choose an alpha carbon. And it's actually not as intimidating as you think. There's probably only one alpha carbon here that you can choose from. You just have to find it. On this molecule, here's our carbonyl. On this side, there's just a proton. And on this side, we have an alpha carbon, but it doesn't have any protons, so it's not capable of forming an enol or enolate. So this molecule is not really capable of doing the attacking. We can't make an alpha carbon over here. On this molecule, we have a proton on this side, and we have an alpha carbon over here that is capable of forming an enol or enolate. This is the only one that's available, so this is the one that we're going to choose and the one that's going to do the attacking. So this one's going to attack, therefore we know this one's going to be attacked. Almost every um, crossed or mixed aldol reaction that you see is going to work just like this. So you don't have to panic, you just take that first step very slowly and it's going to work out for you. Next we're going to draw a bond between this alpha carbon and this carbonyl and push the electrons up onto the O and then we're going to redraw with this bond shortened. Normally, our final step would be to protonate this O. But we also need to check, do we have heat or do we have conjugation? And in this case, we have both. And that tells us that we need to move forward and do the elimination step that yields the condensation product. So we're going to eliminate this hydroxy group and form the alpha-beta double bond that's going to give us our conjugated product. Here's another example. We have two different starting materials, and this reaction takes place in acid. That would give us a different mechanism, but since we're just predicting products, we're just gonna use our same steps, and the reaction conditions don't really matter. We've got two alpha carbons over here, and they're both identical. Both are capable of forming an enolate, so we're just gonna choose this to be our alpha carbon. And technically, it's not gonna be an anion, because of the acid, but we're just going to go with it because we're predicting product, okay? And we're going to let it attack over here. We know this one's going to be attacked because it doesn't have any alpha carbons that are capable of becoming an enol. There's only a proton here, and this carbon has no protons. We're going to draw a bond from this carbon to our carbonyl and push the electrons up onto the O. When I redraw it on the other side, I'm going to shorten this bond push these electrons up and propanate my O. And since we don't see heat and we don't see any additional conjugation in this molecule, I know that I'm going to leave it as a beta hydroxy ketone rather than continuing on with the condensation step that would give us the alpha beta unsaturated product. Do you think you're ready to try one? Do you ever see a question on your exam that just makes you want to give up? This might be that question, but you can do this. Just like normal, your first job is to choose which alpha carbon is going to become the enolate that attacks. And you might have a couple here that you can choose from. Remember that your base can help you make that decision. Why don't you pause the video, predict your product. Don't forget to check for heat and conjugation before you finish your product and then come back and see how you did. You can do this.
All right, this is what I got. Of course, I chose this carbon rather than this carbon to be my alpha carbon that attacked because our base was LDA. LDA chooses the less substituted alpha carbon rather than the more substituted alpha carbon. And this carbonyl doesn't have any alpha carbons with protons, so this one's going to be attacked rather than do the attacking. I drew a bond, or rather an arrow, from this carbon to this carbonyl and pushed the electrons up onto this O. And in order to draw my next product, I sort of shifted this molecule up here and drew a bond and then turned this into an OH to get this <laughs> lovely product. But then, you know, look at all that conjugation. We don't need heat in order to go forward with the elimination or condensation step. So what we need to do is just eliminate this hydroxide group and form an alpha-beta double bond and get this final product. So I know this is kind of a crazy example. Hopefully you won't get anything this difficult on one of your exams, but you might. And I hope you can see that we're still following the same straightforward steps to do something even this wild. Stay tuned for my next video and I'll show you how to do intramolecular aldol additions as well. I don't think those examples will be quite as bad as this one, but you never know. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you'll like and subscribe. And if you want any extra help or even one-on-one -on -one tutoring over the internet, just follow the link to my website.